time for one of these. You know, my daughters come and they beg and they do all kinds of things to try, you know, finally get a couple of dollars out of me so they can go attend the concerts. And he said, I'm give them all these lectures and reluctantly, finally, I part with my money and say, well, okay, if you insist, here's the money, but I hope there's not another one in a long time. He said, that, he said that's the way I operated, reluctantly. He said, most of the time, I even made him beg. And he said, now I can see that's not the way to live. And then he told me the story. After he decided to change his life and change his whole lifestyle and his procedure, he said, I'm going through the paper one day and I found out one of the rock concerts is coming to town and it's one of the, my girl's favorite rock stars coming to town. So he said, now with my new life in view, he said, I go down and buy the tickets. And he said, I brought them home. When they got they got home from school that day. He said, I handed him an envelope and said, here are your tickets to the next concert. He said, the begging days are over. He said, my daughters couldn't believe <laughs> what had happened. He said, they were so happy terribly excited so he gives him the envelope now he says don't open the envelope until the evening of the concert when you get there they said okay so comes the evening of the concert and his two daughters rush off to the concert when they get there they hand the usher the envelope they open it up right and inside they take out the tickets and the usher says follow me takes them down front 10th row, center. They can't believe. They say, hey, wait a minute, hold it, hold it. Let's take a look at those tickets again. <laughs> this can't be. He looks at the tickets and says, yes, it is. Just follow me. 10th row, center. See, before then, all the tickets they begged for were way back up in the balcony right where you couldn't see. They couldn't believe it. 10th row, center. He said, uh, that night, a little late, just to see what would happen. He said, sure enough, concert's over. Girls come home about midnight, bursting through the door. One lands in his lap. One's got her arms around his neck. They say, you have got to be probably the greatest father who ever lived. And he said, guess what those tickets cost me? Eight dollars. Eight dollars. You can't believe how for such small amounts you can change your whole life by changing your attitude, your procedure, your lifestyle, anticipating versus being reluctant, figuring out ways to do it with joy instead of animosity. Life this audiobook on Amazon has made me over $20,000 and I didn't even make it myself. I just uploaded it and now I Lifestyle. If there's one thing to start working on in a heavy way after you leave here this weekend, is figuring ways, figuring ways to be unique. Remember, it's not the amount that counts. It's the plan that counts. Lifestyle. Learning how to live. See, once you've put this all together, you will anticipate every day. You can't wait for the morning to come. You can't wait to get started. You can't wait to get at it. You can't wait to put your plan into action. You can't wait for all the little surprises you've got ready for some people. You can't wait to execute lifestyle and be more productive and progressive and learn and grow. And of all of the things we've covered here in these two days, this is one of the things that can affect your life so much that now it will be an investment in your progress. It'll be an investment in your language you can't believe what it'll do in getting you a promotion on the job. All things will reflect what you do concerning how you live, lifestyle, and what you do about your family and yourself and your money and your substance and your time and your talent and your ability. Don't just live your life. Design it. Don't just exist. 
grow, change, develop, become unique. And it'll add a whole new dimension to your life. It's called lifestyle, part of personal development. Time and considered to be America's foremost business philosopher. He has been sharing his success philosophies for over 40 years to over 4 million people worldwide. Jim Rohn has helped motivate and train an entire generation of personal development trainers, as well as hundreds of executives from America's top corporations. He is a master motivator, author, and a living legend. Welcome, Jim. Wow, Chris, thank you very much. Yeah, I good to have that. you here. I'll take you with me around the world. Inter <laughs> just introduce me. Yeah. So I want to ask you, you know, we, mm -hmm. we were talking as we did the run-through for the promo there uh, about being a living legend, and you really are. I mean, you have had uh, an, an incredible life, an exceptional life, where you've been able to influence so many people. How do you go from the kid that you started out to, you know, where you're at now, speaking all over the world, how do you get started in that? Well, part of it is uh, living long enough to have a chance to be a legend, right? There you go. And uh, I just celebrated birthday number 75. Uh -huh. But uh, 25 years old, I'm living in uh, uh, Idaho, where I was born and raised. And, um, you know, I'm married. I've got a little family started and struggling to pay my bills. But, you know, working hard and doing the best I can. And uh, then you've heard the story. This, I get this knock on the door, and um, there's a little Girl Scout selling Girl Scout cookies. And she gives me this incredible presentation. Uh, Girl Scouts, best organization in the world. Everybody wants to support the Girl Scouts. We've got these cookies, only $2. And she very politely asked me to buy. No problem. I wanted to buy. Big problem. I didn't have $2 in my pocket you know and I'm not destitute but my pockets are empty I'm a grown man I'm 25 years old I've been to one year of college I got a little family going I live in America and I don't have the two dollars in my pocket and I didn't want to tell her that so I did what I thought was next best I lied to her and I said hey look I've already bought lots of Girl Scout cookies we've still got plenty in the house we haven't eaten yet she said, oh, that's wonderful. Thank you very much. And she leaves. When she leaves, I say to myself, I don't want to live like this anymore. I mean, how low can you get lying to a Girl Scout? Right exactly. Now? So that was one of those days I call the day that turns your life around. Yeah. When I really made the commitment, I must start a search for finding ways to, to do better. I always wanted to but I just hadn't found the person or the ways. Mm -hmm. Shortly after that, I found someone who became my mentor over a five-year period after that, between ages 25 and, uh, and 30, 31. Um, what he taught me made me a millionaire, um, entrepreneur, changed my life, refined my philosophy, helped me develop skills and disciplines that I didn't have before, mm -hmm. totally revolutionized my life over that five-year period and uh, that was the beginning of uh, my change of uh, mind and and circumstances and uh, then that led to uh, where I am today hmm. I wonder how many people have that dramatic moment like you did you shut that door and you went I just lied to a Girl yeah. Scout person some people could have just said well yeah I had to do what I had to do yeah. other people like yourself say never again yeah you don't know I call it the mystery and the magic. Hmm. Why one experience affects a person one way and another person passes it off yeah. and doesn't let it, doesn't let it uh, change their life for the better. Or they might not do it now and maybe later something else will happen and that, that'll be the moment. You just don't know. As you know, lecturing, giving seminars, teaching, training, you know why some people pick it up, do something with it, change their lives and others don't. I remember at the 2004 Weekend Leadership event, we had someone come back who had been to the 2001, mm -hmm. and they were in real estate, and they had bought some outrageous amount of real estate, you know, $50 million in the last, because they walked out of the last one and said, mm. and then another guy was there, and he said, I was at the same one, but he went out and did it, and I didn't. Well, he was back for 2004. He said, yeah. in 2007, he right. said, I'm coming back, and I will have built my fortune. Yeah. Yeah. That's, that's part of the mystery. You know, I've written how many books now? Five or six, and... Uh... Um, I should have written 26, 
So what happened to those other 20 books? That's the mystery. Mm. You know, the magic is the six, and the mystery is the 20 that are missing. Mm. So we're a bit of a mystery to ourselves, right? Yeah, sure. I should have, but I didn't. Yeah. You know, I had the skills, but I didn't put them to work. Uh, so we all have a bit of that. But then the things we do that sort of dramatically change our life, that's the magic. That's the, that's the power. Yeah. Part of it is the law of averages. You know, I tell this little Bible story about the sower went out to sow the seed, and he was highly ambitious, and he had good seed, but the first part of the seed that he sowed, the birds got. And then the next, uh, he keeps going, and the next seed falls on uh, thorn, uh, stony ground where the soil is shallow. And the little plant starts to grow, and the first hot day it, it withers and dies. So he keeps on going. The next seed that he sowed uh, fell on thorny ground. Yeah. The little plant starts to grow. And then the thorns choke it to death. And it called the thorns little cares, little things that keep people from doing mm -hmm. the bigger things. And then finally, he keeps on sowing and the seed falls finally on good ground. But then the good ground was a bit of a, an interesting idea that some of it produced 30%, some of it produced 60, and some of it produced 100. So it's the full range from the birds getting some and the hot weather yeah. and the thorns to the good ground, even though good ground has a variety of 30, 60, 100. So when I started out lecturing, I wondered why I couldn't get everybody to do the 100%. Then I found out, you know, this, this is not to be, right. you know. So that when I say to John, you should have been at the meeting last night, and he said, well, hey, the screen, screen door came off the hinges. I had to fix and do some repairs. And so I say, now I understand yeah. that uh, some people are going to let little things cheat them out of doing better things. But maybe that'll change. Yeah. You know, a, a week from now, somebody wakes up and has an experience like I did with the with the Girl Scout, and uh, and uh, everything changes. Mm -hmm. So the door usually is always open, unless somebody totally resists the idea of self improvement. But I think there's enough experiences along the way to prod us and push us a little bit. Or we hear a testimonial, or we read a book, right. or somebody buys us a ticket and we go to a seminar, and we're never the same again. You share an idea with someone, two people, one of them says, I see it, and the other one says, it isn't clear to me. You say, why not? It's perfectly clear when you shared it. Yeah, why can't you see what I see? Yeah, true. We all, how come you don't feel like I feel? So you have to allow for that. <clears throat> and then we have to allow for it happening even in our own experience, like me with the missing books. Uh, I should have and I didn't. I let it go and I should have picked it up. Um, so I th guess the key is to do the best we can. And the key is to keep learning from every experience possible. Our own personal experiences or from someone else's experiences by sermon, yep. the lyrics of a song, uh, a personal testimonial someone gives you sitting at Denny's for a Tuesday morning breakfast. and something clicks and something happens you never know yeah those moments are kind of a mm. mixture of everything coming together yeah. right timing and your own yeah. personal circumstances so you end up going to work for Earl Shelf and you had lots of lessons to learn what over were that those? six year seven year period I was are you interested in cybersecurity but you worry that you'll have to spend a ridiculous amount of time and money to get there let me he was with me about five years then he died but at the early age of 49. Huh. But uh, those were such dramatic days of incredible change. And the stuff he taught, he only went to the ninth grade in school, so hmm. he put things very simply. For the excuses I gave, he said, no, those are not the reasons. I said, things cost too much. He said, no, you can't afford them. Hmm. You know, little philosophies like that that opened my eyes to see. What was the story where you brought him a paycheck? You said, this is all they pay. Yeah, this is I all love, they pay. I he love says, this. no, this is all they pay you. I thought, <laughs> oh, you're right, I guess. He said, don't some at the company make three, four, five times as much? And I said, well, yes. And he said, well, this is not all they pay. This is all they pay you. Yeah. If you qualified for the 10 times this, wouldn't they pay you that amount? And I said, I guess they would, of mm -hmm. course. He said, well, let's go to work on that. Yeah. We don't have to go to work on the company for more pay. We've got to go to work on you to become more qualified. Yeah, they, they have pay structure already set up yeah, for some people. Set up. you got to fit into that. And um, then when I, in my <laughs> lectures, I show the this little economic uh, 
staircase, you know, ladder to climb. Yeah. Starts at $5 an hour and goes all the way up to $32 million for one year. Right. One year's annual income. And uh, somewhere along the way, uh, by what we hear and what we experience, we try to make ourselves better qualified for the next move up. Yeah. And that's the key, is to keep moving up, keep growing, keep developing, see what all you can do with your life. What uh, he, he was really the first person to, to give you the idea of personal development, mm -hmm. right? What kinds of things was he telling you about the importance of developing yourself? What were some of those lessons that he taught you? One he used, which got, really got my attention, he said, uh, why don't you set a goal to become a millionaire? I'm 25 years old. He said, this is America, land of opportunity. Why don't you set a goal to become a millionaire? And then he said, for what it will make of you to achieve it. Hmm. And I thought, wow, that's a whole different philosophy. Set a goal to become a millionaire for what, for the person you have to become in order to be worth a uh, million dollars. Then he said, once you've become a millionaire, you can give the money away because what's important is not what you got, but the person you became. Hmm. And I got the message. Hmm. And that's where I started hearing those phrases from him. Work harder on yourself than you do on your job. Um, bringing value to the marketplace is how you get paid. The more value you bring to the marketplace, the better your pay. And also you get paid for what you become. Mm. A leader, an entrepreneur, a manager, somebody who has the ability to inspire other people. Uh, so somebody's watching and they're saying, okay, work harder on yourself than you do on your job. Mm. And they, they're, they're, they agree with it in principle. They say, yeah, that sounds right. I know I need to work on myself. What, if, what would you recommend people do? I started out with developing a list of skills I didn't have. Huh. You know, I'm raised in farm country, southwest Idaho. Right. I, I know how to milk cows, but the pay's not good. <laughs> That's right. So the first thing, and I started part-time, um, a little uh, sales adventure on how to get customers. It was in health and nutrition. And uh, I believed in the product, and I was taught, here's how you get a customer. And then here's how you ask them, who do they know that wants to be healthier? Um, then um, expand your business from there. So that was the first extra skill I learned from just the regular farm skills that started to change my life. Mm. So this is part of the personal development, learning that extra skill. In my seminars, I now teach in the 21st century, you need more than one skill. One is for economic safety. Right. Here's the guys that's worked for General Motors. They just, what, closed a couple of plants and laid off, what, I don't know, 25,000 people. This guy has been there, let's say, for 15 years. Now he's laid off, and he tells us he's already having economic difficulty. Mm. And the reason is, Chris, he only had one skill, mm. you know? Over the last three or four years, if he would have taken accounting two nights a week or something, yeah, so that when this crisis occurred, he would have something to fall back on. Hmm. So in my seminars, I teach a whole list of skills I learned uh, by the time I was uh, 30, 31, that not only made me rich, but uh, really broadened the whole scope of my ability to be an entrepreneur, affect other people's lives. And then I got into, of course, teaching and training. But uh, that's part of it. Mm. I learned sales. I learned to find good people. I learned uh, to get people to work together. Interesting phrase in the Bible says, if two or three agree on a common purpose, nothing's impossible. I thought, wow, two or three, not all alone, but two or three. So if you can get inspired and inspire a couple of people to go with you, you could do some pretty extraordinary things. I learned how to do that. Mm. Then I learned uh, recognition and reward, rewarding people for steps of progress. You may work for a company and they reward people for the big steps. I've learned to reward people for little small steps of progress. Anything you can think of yeah. to give them a, a reward for making uh, some progress. It doesn't have to be a big reward. It doesn't have to be big. Small, Something small. Kind word. Then it uh, comes to a philosophy that says, be so busy giving other people recognition you really don't need it for yourself. Mm. Now you've arrived at a very good place. Mm. Your greatest happiness is other people getting rewards, not necessarily yourself. Mm. But then Zig comes back with the old philosophy that's so true. If you help enough people, 
get what they want from either money to recognition or success. Uh, you can have everything you want. Yeah. I heard Zig say that I think almost 50 years ago, 45 plus. And uh, when he said, you can have everything you want, I underlined the word everything. Because <laughs> you could want a lot, And right? I said, hey, I think Zig is right. If you help enough people, get yeah. what they want. Yeah. But that's another skill. Mm -hmm. Then I think the ultimate skill is the skill of communication. And I divided that one into three parts. One is training, right? Showing somebody how to do the job. Next is teaching. And I simply use the two words for uh, a purpose, teaching life skills. Because one of the things that helped me really revolutionize my life, age 25, was learning how to set goals. Mm -hmm. Decide what you want, write it down, start checking them off. Where do you want to go? Make that list. Yeah. What do you want for your family? Make that list. Yeah. I started doing all that. That's called teaching, teaching life skills. So if you combine job skills with life skills, your chances now really start to multiply. Mm -hmm. Then the ultimate in communication is learning to inspire, helping somebody to see themselves better than they are, um, transporting them into the future. Say, Mary, here's who you could become. With just a few changes, I promise you, you'll never be the same again. Here's the kind of person you could become. Confident, strong, able to cope with circumstances and changes. You could be that person. So do you think that that, that is something that anybody can do? I mean, when, typically when people think of leaders, they think of the heads of, you know, captains of industry and presidents and, you know, leaders of social movements. Is that something, somebody do middle management in their own sure. career? Parents? Sure. Parents should even learn to do it at yeah. home. Yeah. Here's the person you could become. Um, we try every means possible, right? Especially for our children. Yeah. To expose them ideas that we know, we translate best we can, or from church, or hopefully from school, um, from the neighborhood, from uh, the business community where they might get a job and go to work. We just hope and pray that they will be constantly exposed to things that'll cause them to think, change, refine habits, uh, develop skills, uh, have personal satisfaction of the success they want. Mm -hmm. We hope that happens. But it's going to come from a variety of sources, not just one. It's like mentoring. Uh, I happen to find somebody who, you know, was the business employer, uh, business partner that I worked with, um, as well as being a, a mentor. Mm -hmm. But sometimes, it, you know, somebody mentors you in good health, somebody else mentors you in spiritual matters. Someone else mentors you in uh, family relations, and someone else mentors you in business and uh, developing skills. Did you go looking, actively looking for mentors throughout your life? Uh, no. After that Girl Scout experience, um, I said to myself, I must find something. And sure enough, a friend of mine said, I've gone to work with this man. You've got to meet him. <laughs> that was shortly after that I met Mr. Shelf. And Who knows the mystery of that, right? You, yeah. Um, when it's you when really, the student is ready, the yeah. teacher appears. Yeah. When you have that determination, it seems like things start, you know, happening and coming your way. Yeah. At least the odds are better. Yeah. Everything's a matter of odds, but if you do certain things, I think you can increase your odds that better things will happen mm -hmm. for you. Mm -hmm. So after you became successful in your business, then. Uh, there was a phone call. You got a phone call, right? And somebody said, hey, come and talk it to us. Yeah, I moved to Beverly Hills. Because that's what you should do when you become successful. Yeah, right? where else would a Hills. kid from the farm country of Idaho <laughs> move to, if you got rich, Beverly Hills. <laughs> so yeah. when I get there, a friend of mine said, you've got to come and tell your story to my service club. You belong to the Rotary. And he said, if I arrange this uh, breakfast meeting, I think our luncheon meeting, he said, uh, would you come, you know, just do a little 30-minute talk and tell your story? And he said, we'll call it uh, Idaho Farm Boy Makes It to Beverly Hills. I said, okay, suits me. So I did this little talk, and uh, evidently they enjoyed it. Before the day was over, I got a couple more invitations. You got to come talk to our service club, tell that same story, share those same ideas. That started me thinking about, um, you know, really becoming involved in teaching and training. I'd done a lot of training yeah. and inspiring in my own <clears throat> entrepreneurial organizations.
but uh, not not for the public. So I started doing these little talks for service clubs and once in a while a high school class, college class, enjoying it very much. Then one day a man said to me, uh, I've heard your talk now two or three times and I've got this little company going. And he said, if you would come make a presentation, I'd be happy to pay you. And I thought, incredible. There's a job. Yeah. <laughs> could I really share my story and get paid? He said, I'll be happy to do it. Wow. So I did that. Then that led to another one and another one. Then later on, the idea occurred, why not have uh, some representatives out uh, selling tickets to come and hear a public seminar? Yeah. And uh, we finally put that together. And that was, you know, all those many, many years ago. Tell us a little bit about that. This is a kind of a peek behind the scenes of, because you're really one of the pioneers, you and Zig and some of the other folks, Cabot Roberts and, and some of those. What was the, what was the culture like back then when, when you guys were out barnstorming America and really developing the whole personal development culture that now is so prominent in America? What was that like? It was exciting. Uh, of course, mine, I gave it all away. Huh. You know, all of those speeches I did yeah. in colleges, the high schools, and for service clubs and so on, that was all free. Then when somebody offered to pay me, that put a whole new look on it. And then uh, began this process mm -hmm. of uh, creating something valuable enough to where someone would buy a ticket and go and listen. Mm -hmm. And uh, those were exciting days. The first one I did for pay, I think I had about 45 or 50 participants that bought tickets, a lot of them were friends of mine, that I'm sure bought because they were friends of mine, but there were some others that, you know, legitimately bought at the Beverly Hilton Hotel in Beverly Hills, and that first public seminar for people buying tickets, I think, was 1961 or 62, wow. 1962. Wow. And then that started, it started growing from there. Yeah and uh, developed to uh, where I am now, traveling the world and telling my story and still sharing ideas. Yeah. But uh, uh, it was it was a fantastic time. What do you Earl Nightingale, right? Yeah, Some right, of those way Earl. back in the beginning. Hey, now. You already know how Jim Rome bring it. He bring the heat on Miami out here. So uh, I'm trying to figure out how to get this off the full screen now because it's messing up now. Exit. Beginning. There we go. Thank you for moving out the way. Get to these charty barties. But now nah, he was talking some real stuff. You know what I'm saying? It gives you a different perspective to look at to understand how your life can be when you take your life serious, right? The experiences that we have, the skills that we have as individuals, like when he talked about that <clears throat> Girl Scout cookie situation where he didn't have the money to pay for the Girl Scout cookie and he lied to her, it took me back to the time when I couldn't afford the bag of chips for my daughter, right? I went to the store and I lied to her. So I'm like, yo, daddy, can I get a bag of chips? I'm like, uh, I left my wallet. Yeah, I'm talking about, but realistically i couldn't afford the 50 cent bag of chips and of course that was the beginning of my situation like dang yo i, I can't be a father and not be able to afford things for my kids because they're going to want things and it's my responsibility to be there for them they're going to need things and it's my responsibility to be there for them and i can't blame other things other people or other situations for why i can't do what i'm supposed to do as a man as a father as an individual in this world, I want to make it, right? So I had to take action toward the things that I really wanted. And because I was taking action toward those things, opportunities started to come. After that situation, I got into a business opportunity because I was good at marketing and um, attraction marketing. I was able to build massive organizations in the beginning of my career. Didn't really know what I was doing. Um, linked up with a successful entrepreneur, a six-figure a, a month earner. And um, in 2016, he flew me out to Dallas. He told me that my job was in the way. I quit my job instantly. I was standing outside of uh, 
this hotel in Blue Ash, Ohio. Um, I, I get to the Hyatt. That's what it was. And I said, all right, cool. I'm going to quit my job. Got off the phone with him, quit my job. Uh, a few weeks later, he flew me to Dallas. I sat in the house with him, a seven-figure earner, and his team. I was doing Facebook ads. Uh, we had a product. He told me to go ahead and run the ads for the squad. I ran the ads. 30 days later, we hit seven figures. 32 days. Mind-blowing. I can't unsee it. Can't undo it. I, that, that was, that's what happened with my life. I'm like, what just happened? I will never go back to a nine-to-five. Now I can do the things that I want to do, how I want to do them, because I position myself to do the things in alignment with the end goal where I want it to be. Now, of course, every situation, every opportunity isn't always going to work in your favor. Just like he said, we're having a backup plan. I didn't have a backup plan. I was young. I didn't have the personal development going at the time. So I was young and goofy. Blowing the bag, doing goofy stuff. You already know how that goes. But in today's society of who I am today, I never gave up. I continued to grind. I kept pushing. I inspire people. I tell people they can versus they can't. I tell them to keep pushing. Stop giving up. We all know what giving up feels like. But what does success feel like if we keep quitting? We will never find out. We got to do the things that's inside of us and let them out so we can get the results that we want. Every person on this call, every person that wants to replay is a millionaire. It's already within you. You just have to bring that millionaire out by doing the things that's in alignment with the end goal. The UJ, I'm sorry, I know I'm going off on a tangent, but UJ, I'm still looking for this to sell from yesterday. Still. I'm not shifting that right now. Still looking for this to drop. But we got to take control of our life. <clears throat> we have to set the goals. If you fail to plan, you plan to fail. Plan it out. What is your plan to get to that income goal that you want? Your income goal may not be a meal. You just may want to hit six figures. And then you may change your goal from there. But you have to be working towards something. If you're not working toward something, you're working toward nothing. Just like getting in the car and not having nothing, no address into the GPS. You're just driving. Uh, of course, unless you know exactly where you're going. But it's it's time. Like, we have to take ourselves, our life, and everything that we have going on serious. We know that we should have been at the next level, right? We know that we should have been doing certain things uh, back then that we've been waiting and procrastinating on that we have to do now to play catch up. And then we get overwhelmed and then we get stressed out and then we got extra things that we wasn't even expecting coming our way. So then we like, yo, I'm, I'm, I just I just need a, I need a new break. I need a break. I need to run away from everything. Right. Don't allow yourself to get stressed. You're in control of your life. You dictate your actions. You dictate your results. All you got to do is go after what it is that you want. Everything you want is on the other side of the action that you haven't even taken yet. It's just time to take action, to bring the cash in. Now let's get to these charts. Hey, man. All right, cool. So, yep, UJ's making it happen. Dot digital. Look at that. See, not when you're done. With, okay, got you. All right, but yeah, this is already drawn up. Y'all see this? It's, it's here. Let me look at nasty, nasty Nas one honey buns. Real quick, and um, this will be. Ooh. Okay, cool beans. This is a good one. All right, out the gate, demand zone. I see three more candles here. So, one, looking to buy from here. Two, Small imbalance. So let's take this one off. This one is more valid. The me, 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 me. All right, cool beans. So take this rectangle here. 
our CDs. Let's go ahead and mark this supply zone here. I can really do this greasy. All right, let's uh, make this red. You know what? Let's make it greasy, kid. I got you, Leon. Hold on. Where my stuff at? Stop playing with me, Sam. Let me get right. Let me make this real easy for myself. That's what Jim Rohn said, do. Turn this red. If you want to know what I'm doing, if you haven't been on a call. Oh, <laughs> all right, cool. I ain't have my uh headset on, so. Y'all can hear me still? Cool. Yeah. All right, bet. Yeah, and I probably sound clear now. Like, the, you, you feel me? All right, cool. Let's just jump down to this 15 minute. Let's get right with the get right. Stop playing with me, Leon. You know what I'm saying? All right, top already right here. Bottom is right here. Let's get right, dog. The lowest it went is right here. I'm just going to take this whole red candle. Drag it to the right, because I'm all right. You know what I'm talking about? All right, I'm going to change this gray. The highest point in the red is here. Get another rectangle. And we see it's trending down. And we hit this bottom zone. Okay, take this off now. We got our highest and lowest points. Let me see. Okay, we're looking for the biggity buy. Bet. Well, <laughs> put this there. What? Um. Um. Let's go to this five minute time frame. Let's just go ahead and yeah, me. It's yeah. You already okay? Yeah, you already good, bro. Leave me alone, man. Yeah, I me. Mean, leave me alone, man. I see what you see, kid. I want to break of that yellow line because I got that same thing. If it breaks that yellow line, I'm going to look for the first candle to pull back to that yellow line, and I'm going to buy it to your red area because that's my area. Night. Now you want to take ownership of areas and stuff. That's what's up. Hey, you already know. <laughs> hey, <look. laughs> hey, so look, you got this imbalance right here, and it came back to the imbalance. Pillar. Top side. And I only got to keep that line on there. Imbalance right here. Taking off. And it might create one right now on, mm -hmm. on that. On this one right here. Three. Yeah. Right underneath that is an imbalance. Yep. So then we just look for the place where that, that beginning. Here we go. This is the beginning. Oh, yeah, man, we good. Let's take it to the top. But you know, get 10 pips and get up out the market. What? <laughs> You're right. <laughs> you know, get your 10. Get your 10 for the win. All right. Um, yeah, I like I like this little move on us. And y'all know this is exactly what I was talking about yesterday. That same pattern. It came up. Did this little pull back a yarn. And then we want to see that continuation. Same thing if it was drawing, uh, if it was happening to the downside, it's the same move, it's just the opposite way. There you go, it's the head and shoulders, the shoulder. Mm -hmm. You can also, you know what I'm saying, look for the market to create an M. Or a W. That's when you really get litty lit.
Good thing it came all the way down. That's all you need, just one of them moves. This is somebody's rent, somebody's car note, right? It's just whatever bill you want it to pay. And it's the same concept over and over and over again. Even if you're going to the higher time frame, so I'm going to go to the higher time frame too. So let's go to the daily. Man, this is love in a bag. Mm hmm. I see imbalance here and down to the body on trending uppy. Let me see if I see any four. I don't. Definitely on the trendy side of life. But clear picture. Clearer picture. The imbalance. So, <clears throat> definitely want this to pull from here to the top side. This is an imbalance. I'm just putting this down here because it's where the imbalance is at. Um, if price does break below here, it's definitely going to tap into this. There are news events today at like 10 o'clock, a rare photo. Uh huh. 10 o'clock here. And then we got the AUD tonight. Now, yesterday I was knocked out 5 p.m. I got up at 5 a.m. this morning. I was gone, out of it, sleep, slump. <laughs> so, definitely missed this um, news event last night. I don't even know what happened. 7 o'clock tonight, Tuesday, news event at 7.30. AUD. Definitely got to take that trade. Since I missed last night, definitely got to catch... This trade here, uh, you see Wednesday, we got some nice movements here. Um, I will be able to take a Canadian trade at 945. So probably will trade like you can. Um, these will probably be like SPX, U30, you know, one of them tight pairs. I may not trade this 3 a.m. Plus it's an orange folder. 8 o'clock. We on Thursday anyway, so at 8.15, we got EUR, 8.30 by USD, and uh, 8.45 on the EUR side of life again, then 10 o'clock. Then Friday, it's with a, uh, so we separate the men from the boys, the girls from the women, NFP. So we'll be prepped and ready for that as well. <clears throat> Nasty nods. We got a nice demand zone here. We got supply uh, or whoa imbalance right here. Price came back down here. This is showing also this is the zone from the 15 minute time frame. So we see us pulling up from here. Now what Leon more than likely did was boom took the position from I'm just going to say here and just put that loss stop below here. And T3 yeah. in the zone. I ain't getting it. I ain't getting it. Okay. I'll grave it with mashed potatoes, but this is probably what he see. You know what I'm saying? So this would be the, the Tradeon. It stopped here at this zone. I don't know how comfortable I am with stopping this right here, so I would just play it safer than the with fit. Whoa. I just put it below this wick. I'm taking UJ. Um, that's that's my movie. Um, this is nice though. 
right here we do see that it had a nice downward push a uh, small little imbalance right in there let's go down to this hour let me take this off real quick so right here on the hour time frame you can see right here inside this one hour imbalance prices here gave us the wick inside this 15 minute zone that we're looking at and now we're pulling up like a pamper uh on the finzis.com and look at the oh uh, the oh go to finzis i'm putting you on game son man put me on game dude you said i'm just, I'm just driving right now f f i n what F I N V I Z dot com. This, uh, what in the world is this? Come on, some heat map. I ain't no weather man, dog. Like <laughs> okay, so this looks like I need to go here to Forex. Well, NASDAQ was at the top, so never mind. No, go back, go back. Yeah, 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 yeah. When you look to the right, when you go back to that other screen. All right, here you go. When you look at right, that right, screen, that box right there, that's to your right, all them companies, that's a heat map. If When you get up at like 9 or 9.30, if you look at that, the first glance of your eye is going to be either red or green. And that's how you will know. One of those colors is stand out to you. And that's how you know you can get in that trade, that direction. Okay. All right. So right now, it's telling me that it wants to sell because the first glance, I see more red than green. So at this level that we're at, it's that's why we in this fake value gap. It's a possibility it can fake us out to the upside and but I gotta wait till 9 30 because that's gonna change. Mm hmm Okay, yeah. And that's why where is that uh imbalance at? Hold up, wait a minute, hold up, wait a minute. I think it was a four hour time frame. Mm. Oh yeah, right here. So if it break below here, definitely going to take it to here. So it can be a sell stop elation. But you know that news event is at 10. So it's 817 Eastern. I got to make sure I say that because I'm on Central. And y'all see my stuff say 717. But uh, even if this is that pull to the downside, it'll pull up to the imbalance and take, take off to the downside. It can also pull up to here, create that M pattern, and you know what I'm saying? Copy this side. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. But I am more bullish with this, honestly. You on know, a bull side of life? Despite the news. <laughs> mm -hmm. News events be going. So, I mean, this looks good for sure. You know what I'm saying? To go up so forth. I want this news even. You well it go? I hope I ain't too far behind, Keith. Nah, not at all. Okay. Um, Where is today? So, 10 o'clock. This is why I'll be looking for a push on these pairs. Um, So, we're looking at the usual effect. Y'all see it say actual greater than forecast is good for currency. Those who have... Mm. not been on the call this is how you read the news um whatever day it is so today is tuesday we got a news event at 10 o'clock a.m i believe all right, all right. so give me one second let me so you're going to go to the date and the time of the news event so you see it say 10 o'clock that's going to be yep. the exact time of the news event so tuesday oh. 5th you're going to be like okay this is like a grade card when we were in school, if I was to be in your class and be like, yo, what did you get in math? You would tell me, I think I got a B. That's your forecast. So the, the forecast is what you potentially got. 
your previous is what you got last semester. Your actual is what you actually got when the grade card came out. So today you won't know what you have in math until 10 o'clock on Tuesday, March 5th. So at 10 o'clock, this actual will have a number there. And we're looking for this number to be greater than the forecast number. So if this number that prints out at 10 o'clock is greater than the forecast number, that means it's good for USD. So if we are trading a pair with USD in the front, we will be looking to potentially buy. If the USD pair is second, as if you're trading GBP, USD, NZD, USD, then you will be looking to sell because the USD is second. So look at it this way. Oh, wait, like wait, 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 wait. Real quick, you so you saying that all right, so the previous is basically saying what you had before in the forecast is what could possibly be, which is fifty two point nine. And then you're saying that if your actual US dollar is above the fifty two point nine, then you're ready to sell. No. So all right, shit. Sure. I got you. The previous is what you got previous semester. That's the last time a news event happened. It was 53.4. Whatever the number is. The numbers really don't matter. Just looking for it to be above or below. The four. No, no, real quick, real quick, Keith. I'm sorry, bro. I'm sorry. So the 53, the 53.4, what is that giving me? Is that telling me how much um shares been sold or no this is just the numbers this is projections off of what they're doing on the news event so they're projecting that this is going to be the number 52.0 uh whatever dollar amount it is for the currency so remember we're making money off of the exchanges these numbers so that's the dollar amount no just ignore it don't overthink it just keep it easy keep it real simple because it'll confuse the hell out of you all you want to know is if the actual is greater than the forecast. So it, let's go to an old news event so it can make sense. Uh, okay. Let me just refresh. Okay. Close this out. One second here. Let me go to a red folder. All right, so we have this CHF, Swiss franc pair, 2.30 in the morning, news event. Boom. Okay. We go to the detail. We look at the previous forecast, actual. We see that the previous 0.2%. We see the forecast 0.5%. Let's just say the actual was not there. Let's say it's 1 o'clock in the morning, so it's before the news event come out. We come look at the okay. news event just like we just did. Look at the usual effect. Actual greater than forecast is good for currency. So we literally just come over here and look to see if the when the number prints, is this number greater than this number? That's all it don't everything else don't even matter. Is this number greater than this? If it is, that okay. means it's good for the currency, meaning we'll be looking to buy. If it's good for it, we look to buy it. If it's bad for it, we look to sell it. So then at on the fourth of March at 2 30 a.m., I'm gonna go to a chef pair. So go to here, let's go chef JPY. So because CHF is in the front, we're going to be looking to potentially buy it at 2.30 in the morning. Okay. Let me go to 2.30. I can do a 30-minute time frame. Here's the fourth. That's 12.30, 1.30, 2.30. Here's a 2.30 candle. Gave us that one push. Okay. So this one move off the news event. Now, every time a news event happened, that does not mean it's instantly going to move. So it moved up, let's just say, 40 pips. That could have been $4, $40, $400, 4000 40000 $400,000. It just depends on the amount that the person risked. So... When the news events print out, all we're wanting to do is look at it just basic. Yo, is this is this greater than this? Because sometimes there will be more than just one folder. Uh, let me find one. Let's go Friday. So basically, who's ever at the top of your list, that's who you need to handle first? Nah, whichever news event you want to trade, 
for example, like this 10 o'clock news event, it's a red folder. That means it's high impact. So I'm looking for a big move to happen. So I'm like, oh, I'm definitely going to trade. Okay. So then on the 1st of March, on uh, Friday, came here. <clears throat> we see the usual effect. Actual greater than forecast is good for currency. We see that the actual is not greater than. So that's one folder telling us that it's bad for USD. So we go to the next folder. Boom. Open this up. Actual greater than forecast. The actual is not. So that's bad for USD. We have this third folder here. Actual greater than forecast. It's not. So three folders is telling us that it's bad for USD. So on the 1st of March, we should have been looking for sales on pairs that had USD first. So at, let's go here. And we actually. I've got to get me a fucking computer today, man. Or like this weekend. So I can like follow you while you doing and shit. Like I can click on the same shit you're clicking on. You know what I mean? Yeah, I got you. And right here, oh, UJ, this is the trade that we took today. We're in profit. But going back to Friday, this that news event. Drip. Okay, I'm seeing how your eye come. I'm up here. Believe it or not, I'm up here zooming in, zooming out because of how my screen is. So I'm up here following your little tracer, <laughs> tracer thing. So I see what you're saying. Friday, Monday. Okay, okay. You're mm -hmm. on Monday now. Yep. So Friday news event happened. Boom, pilt to the bottom. This right. News, this right here. We've been waiting on this to drop since Friday, or since yeah, actually since Friday. One of the rest of the drop. So now. I'm like, okay, I'm in profit. I'm more than 10 pips. I can take profit, put the stop loss in profit. I don't have to sit here and just be scared out of my skin. Like, oh, uh, is this going to be moving in my direction? Right? Um, so let me, real quick, real quick, because I don't want to be confused. So let me ask you something. Um, can you take your icon and move it to where that second large bar from the first one? The so... Bar. right here all right you got that one and then you got the second one next to it that's longer than that one no over the other one over this long red one uh in the middle right here next to the green one. Oh, all right back back in the middle the down the down part the downtrend right at the bottom yeah that one the red one is that where you put your entry at so your uh pips can start growing on that red candle yeah nah not at this one so if i was looking to get into a trade you see i have this bottom zone here the demand zone i would look to buy from this area and go up so since price came up to this red zone at the top we know that this is the area that we're looking to sell from so that's why we took that sell yesterday when we was on the call we was like yo we gonna right, right 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 facts okay 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 it hit me it hit me okay mm-hmm Got you, got you, got you. Okay, yeah, you're Stop buying key. at the lowest point and then selling at the highest point. Got there you, got go. you. Yeah. Keith, with the SPX uh, five, is mm -hmm. USD is USD is what it's trading against, and it will be like this, the second, maybe like SPX USD. Yep, right here. Okay. And look, that's crazy that you did that because I didn't even with Nas one hundred or U thirty, I was like, what the hell is first and what's second? So when I first typed it in. I was always just clicking on the first one and you see it just say SPS 500, but I don't, maybe one it might've been Leon or something that went to a different chart and seen it. I was like, Oh snap. It is on here. I just never paid no attention. So yeah, USD second. So if a news event is bad <clears throat> or if the news event is good for USD, we'll sell SPX. To right. Yep. Yeah. Okay. Let me actually see what SPX is doing. I ain't even traded it this week. I ain't gonna lie. I, it's only been you, Jay. Oh, that, yeah, that, yeah, it's I mean. on for a drop. It's on that drop. Oh yeah, oh yeah, the the pullation. Oh yeah, I'm already in profit on it. I, I put it in already. Oh yeah, you ain't playing no games. Uh, uh Oh yeah, oh yeah, oh. That's, that's the only thing I trade is SPX. Yeah, this is this is nice. This little movie is okay. I need to watch this again. Yeah, you know I said it's a nice little movie. Yeah, you know I said. <laughs> keep trying to tell you. Hey, I, I did catch it last week. I call I call you I call SPX slipping last week. She said, "Give me my money." <laughs> <laughs> I, 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 I caught it too. 
Oh, as a matter of fact, I called. As a matter of fact, I called you. Told you I was like, yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. That celery was mm -hmm. it was perfect because it didn't have no ranch on it. I don't like ranch. Yeah, you know what I'm saying. <laughs> <laughs> so I call. Right, that's all I got. Yes, indeed. Now this is actually. Uh, let me pull this up. Oh yeah, still got room to go. Oh yeah, absolutely. Um, hold up, wait a minute. It might have room, room to go. Definitely, do got a squeeze hit explosion. A four candle pattern here. Uh, Kayla, I. Oof, this is a nice little drop. Uh huh. Mm, to about right in this area. I ain't gonna cap. Later on the day, I might need a little expertise to go over with one more time on how to okay, uh, cool. dictate like them uh the drop of the candles of the of the the lowest point and the highest point. Just like one more time, just refreshing my shit a little bit. I see where you're going with it, though. Oh yeah, I got you. That's actually right around where I put my right. take profit in too. The bottom one. Mm-hmm. Oh yeah, you a swing trader for real. <laughs> I am, but I am, but you know, I follow. Once I go on profit, I follow it with my stop loss, just in case it reverses. Yeah, now that's that's smooth with it. I'm now gonna, let me ask you this, Key: Your stop mm -hmm. loss is that basically protecting you from going under too much from your current price? Yeah, so it'll protect you from losing too much. So you can say, you know, what well, I'm only willing to lose twenty dollars on this trade, and that's what it'd be. So what she's doing is she, when she in profit. She moving a stop loss into profit. So regardless of what happens, she in a win-win situation. Okay. So so even so let's just say I'm up ten dollars. So oh, she just set her stop loss probably above the current price. So basically she'll go. still be winning, winning regardless. Yep. So let's just say she put the stop loss two dollars in profit. At the end of the day, if it pulled all the way back, she knows she's getting two dollars minimum. Oh, okay. Okay. He uh, he saw like he just got a new move. He just you know, did a little cross up like, Ooh, okay. Hey, hey, <laughs> hey, you know, sometimes shit don't sink in until you start looking at it a few times. You know nah, what I'm for saying? For sure. You definitely got to look at it multiple times to catch the eye of the tiger. So, mm -hmm. <laughs> you ain't lying. You ain't lying. So this right here, hey, y'all, real talk. This is a nice drop. Like, this is going to be a nice little drop. And I'm just gonna say it again. This is gonna be a nice little drop. Like, <laughs> let me ask you something. Has there ever been a time where you had to wait like maybe a couple of days for it to drop down for you to buy it at a good point? Like, like you gotta be patient sometimes. Oh yeah. So I, I, I'm gonna send you the uh, what's your name? It's, it gives you the doctor mentality. So when we go to the hospital, we don't get the doctors don't get paid unless they have patients. They don't call us our names. They be like, oh, that's my patient. So we take yeah. that mentality from there and apply it to the charts. If we can be patient like doctors, we can get paid like doctors in the charts. Man, that's what I'm talking about. And we just waiting for it to get to the zone. So like, I'm late to this sale. So if I was to plug in, of course, I'm going to go to a lower time frame to see where I can enter this trade at again. So I know it's going to pull back. I know it's going to drop again. I have to figure out, okay, where in the hell is it going to pull back to so I know where I can interact with an aggressive lot size and eat just like she eating or eat just like he eating or eat just like they eating or how can I eat, period. Well, I Back. see price here at the top. This is where the drop started. Cool. This is perfect. Oh, I got to take the thing off. There we go. Now, let me ask you this. That yellow line, is that where you, that's where you bought it at? Nah, I wouldn't even in the trade. I don't even know why the yellow line is there right now. Oh, no, 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 no. This is from marking up on a higher time frame. This line is the imbalance on a higher time frame where I was telling her to take profits at. Now, what's the imbalance again? That's just confusing. What's the imbalance? I'm about to show you right now. Bet. So the beginning of this drop right here, I'm like, cool. Yeah. So remember yesterday we was talking about our left neighbor and our right neighbor. We got that one big candle, and then you look to your left neighbor, and then you look to your right neighbor, and you look at the wick to your left neighbor. It's not all the way down to fill the body of your house. And your right neighbor's wick isn't pulling up high enough to fill the body of your house. So this part of your house is empty. Right, right. That's the imbalance. There you go. So now we just drag it to the side. <clears throat> and now I'm like, yo, when price pulled back into this area, I'm 
flooding it with bread. Now, if it never you comes in what? with bread, I'm going to pl plug in trades for the sale. So if price okay. never pulls back to this zone, I'm not even worried about getting into the trade because it didn't do what I wanted it to do. Now, if price does what I want it to do and pulls up like a pamper and come into this zone, I'm like, hey, now. And I'm in there like swimwear and I'm just I'm letting it ride all the way down to the take profit. Because once we hmm. have a break of structure, we have a retest. We just broke this level of structure here. We can retest to it. It's going to wick inside this zone, which is what I want it to do. Come in here and wick. I can go to the lower time frame and enter that trade right at the top of the move to the downside. Let me see if this expands. So if you pull back, so you're saying if you pull back up into that yellow, that's when you're uh that's when you're uh you're selling. And if it don't pull back into the yellow and keeps and keeps dropping down, then that's when you're uh getting the fuck up out of there. Well, nah. So remember, I'm not even in the trade right now. So I'm not gonna right, 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 right until it come right here. And once exactly, it comes that's here, what I'm saying. I'm like when it when way. it pulls back into that yellow, then that's when you saying you would uh hit that trade up. Mm -hmm. As in, as in selling it. There you go. Yep. Okay. Okay. So I'm gonna take the short position. So let's say price does come in here. As soon as it come in here, I'm not instantly entering the trade. I'm entering when it break right back below the zone. So I'm taking it all the way down from here. My stop loss is going to be right above this zone. I can put it right above here. I can be safe and put it above here. 21 pip stop loss. And take it all the way down to the bottom of Yana. Now, let's say price does that. If I'm doing a dollar a pip, that's $118. If I'm doing a standard, that's $1,100. Can that happen this week? Absolutely. This is just a 30-minute time frame. We got mad news events happening. There's going to be big pushes this week. We just got to Yeah. All right. Hold on one second. One thing that confused me when you was doing that drop thing with the green uh, shade. Mm -hmm. so so, so you're saying in the red shade, that's where you put your stop loss at, and in the mm -hmm. green shade, that's what again? Take profit. <laughs> take profit. Okay. That's like that's like take me out of this trade. So let's just say you busy at work, you got your stop right. and your take profit set. You don't have to keep checking your phone. It's going to automatically take you out, whether you hit your stop loss or your take profit. Hmm. Because you still make money because you're still you're still above that current price, that bottom yellow line. As long as you above that, as long as you get your shit off before it passes that first yellow line, you good. Yep. So here, I'm on an hour time frame. Go here. This may be the first pit stop. This is the demand zone. So we had a nice push to the upside from here. When you say demand, this is that's the that's the buying zone. Yep. Mm -hmm. So now I can take my little drawing off. Yeah, I didn't. I didn't see either. I didn't see my room. I'll look for like price that. to come into here. Okay. Then it can pull back. Then it can drop. But right now, this drop is dropping. Uh -huh. This is just. This is on its way. So I don't even see the pullback happening right now. So it's headed towards the man zone. There's nothing stopping it from going down right now. Right. So yeah, this is this one in UJ. This one in UJ. And then I think uh Nas, 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 Nas. We check Nas too. Let me pull Nas back up. Let me see what this is doing. It's still drippy. We still drippy. Um, uh, so we in, we in some nice profits there. Let's see what Nas doing. Oh, that's Nas 1000, fam. Oh, that's... right. One o'clock night? Hold on one second. So we still sitting in the zone? Oh, <laughs> then what have you done? Hold on. I'm going to mute the... Uh, I'm going to mute your socks, I mean. 
All right, so here we're in this imbalance. We have our home, we have our left neighbor, and we have our right neighbor. Let me actually mark our neighbors so it can be visible. This is our left neighbor, and this is our right neighbor. Now, the bottom of this wick stops here at the body of your house. It's not filling the right side of your body, the body of your house, the side of your house. And then your left neighbor, their wick stops here, which is leaving your house blank on the left side. So because there's nothing on your left and nothing on your right protecting you, this is an imbalance. So we mark the zone. Now, I used a, a ray. You can use a rectangle if you want to, whichever is easier for you. And what you use it for, and I'm going to take these two off, is to let you know when it's an imbalance and you should potentially look to buy from me. <clears throat> so price left from here, pulled all the way up, consolidated, peeled down. Here's the imbalance. Price is in the imbalance, broke below it, Cool. It's right here. If I want to take this buy, my safe buy is right above this zone. Stop loss below here. Now take it back to the top. I want to make trading so simple for myself. I don't want it to be overcomplicated. I'm looking for the same exact thing every single time, every single time frame, right? If I'm on an hour time frame and I know that this is the imbalance, Okay, this definitely isn't green for me. Imbalance is, is yellowish. So when I go to the lower time frame, I use these zones to help me understand where I'm at inside the market. If I want to put words in them, hey, this is an hour imbalance. When I go to the lower time frame, I know, okay, so this yellow air is my imbalance. Cool, perfect. So let me see what we're doing inside here. Are we leaving out of it yet? Is it time for me to plug in on this lower time frame? Uh... Uh, not yet. Wait a minute. I see a little small demand. Can we pull up from here? Like I'm looking at everything in here on every time frame the same exact way. Because I know I want to enter when it break above this zone. And I'm looking at it right now. Just this section of it. Remember we was talking about this pattern that get created. On a five minute time frame. And it's 8.42 Eastern. Okay, cool. <laughs> so y'all know my trading time. I told you 8.30 to 11. That's when I like to look at these charts. Let me go to 11. And in between this time, I look for this pattern. Not only to the downside, but to the upside. And if I get that pattern, I'm like, yo, it's a go. The beginning of this move was here to the upside. Cool. But now we're inside of our New York session. Real quick, Keith, you fucked my head up with that one. When you move that white uh, line down mm -hmm. to the bottom. Mm -hmm. Okay. Can you bring it back up and tell me why you moved that down like that? Why didn't you just leave it where it was before? Oh, to move it out the way because the candles is already doing what this is. So, like, when I take this, this is just to show you the, the pattern that it created right here. Right, right. So, when you when you can identify price making this pattern, you can take the trade on it. So, for example, let me move this to the middle. Price pull down and pull back. If it pulls back from where it just left from, it's always majority of the time price is going to retrace the place that it just broke from. So yeah. in a place that it just comes like like they always tell us, history always repeats itself. Right. It's never been more true than than in trading. What do you mean? Yes, same things happen the same exact way every single time. We just have to get in position to be in the way of the money. So we utilize right. we utilize these zones and patterns to help dictate the direction of price. 
not only those two, but we look at the news events as well. We look at, you know, price action, market structure. Uh, you got demands on supplies on support resistance, which is pretty much the same exact thing. So when you hear support resistance, you hear supply demand, they're pretty much the same exact thing. Support resistance is a exact spot. Yeah. Supply demand is a whole area. Yeah, he's supposed to be. So with this downward movement, I'm like, cool, perfect. We got this up push here. Uh, where's my arrow? So not only downward, but we also want to see the one to the upside. And when price creates it, when you can actually see it look like a step, when it pulls up and pulls back just a little bit, look to see if you have an imbalance where that pullback is at. So when you look at the big candle, did price go to your left neighbor, right neighbor area? Well, not left neighbor, right neighbor area, but let's go take this imbalance out. This is an imbalance. Right here. This is you, your left neighbor, and then your right neighbor. That area, right, between right. The, wicks, <clears throat> the area in between the wicks is where, hey, you should potentially look for it to buy from here. So this is my hey, you should look to buy from here area. And if price comes here and smacks this zone. When it breaks to the top, I'll take it. If it breaks the top of this one, I'll take it. Because these are two imbalances that I wanted to see it buy from anyway. So these are rules that I'm giving myself in real time. You know what? If you break 1815, I'm buying. Hey, if you break above 1899, I'll buy it. If I go to the TDI and start to get a more precise look at what I'm looking at, Okay, cool. We're inside the imbalance. We have price at the bottom piece of bread, which is support. Hmm. Look to the left. We have support. Remember, at, like we were talking about yesterday, if you want to look for support resistance a little bit clearer, get off the candles and go to the line chart. Right. Look at those peak areas that it makes. And we see right here, and right here, this one's closer to it. It's a support area. So let's go back to the candles. We got support. Mm. Ooh, perfect. Let me just take this imbalance off because it's just in a way. I'll just put a line here to represent where I want to buy above. simple rule for myself buy from here or buy above here so now i know when i'm looking at this chart when price break above nas or break above nas when it break above this area i'm looking to buy it on my five minute time frame i already see i'm coming from a support area i haven't crossed my red line for entry yet i can see this looks like it's creating a w pattern so the last leg of this you said you haven't you said you haven't crossed your red line that green line hasn't crossed the red line for entry mm-hmm is that the MACD you're using? Nope, the TDI. TDI. Remember, okay. remember I was talking about the uh, the peanut butter jelly sandwich yesterday? The top piece of bread, bottom piece of bread? Yep, yep. That's TDI. So right now, okay. we're at the bottom piece of bread, which is supporting us from going below that piece of bread. So right. we're inside the sandwich. We're at support. We want this to respect the bottom piece of bread and cross above the red line. The red line represents our entry line. <clears throat> so... When price cross here, we can look for entry. Well, we see the you talking about that blue that blue bottom piece of the bread. When that blue bottom piece of the bread across that red line, then that's our entry point. No, the green line. Remember, the green line represents current price. So or the or the green. All right, so the green line. So once the green line crosses that above that red line, then that's our entry point. Correct. Okay. Okay. So I'm gonna use these two uh, blue lines here just as the example. So right here, when price. Hit the bottom piece of bread as support. We cross the red line here for entry and we look at price up top. We bought. 
We can go scoot it over just a little bit to the left. Boom. We hit the top piece of bread. Key, bro, how long did it take you to learn these motherfucking charts, dog? Over three years. <laughs> it took over three years consistent. This shit real as fuck. <laughs> <laughs> this shit ain't no hug. So it's it's not too hard, man. What it really was, I didn't have nobody's vision to copy. So I, I didn't have nobody's vision to look at the charts the way that they looked at the charts to say, oh. I can see it the same exact way you see it. So I had to go look at it from YouTube um, because I was in companies and I knew how to recruit. I was getting around people who knew how to trade. I would, you know, see them trade. I'm like, okay, let me just apply it myself and search and research and back test, get on the charts and mess up over and over and over again. So I went three years of messing up, losing money. And I just... Never gave up. I didn't care what nobody said. Oh, that trading stuff don't work. You think that demo is going to help me? You think that demo is going to help me on that uh that one app, the uh, Discord? Mm -hmm. So demos will help because you get to practice. It's, it's as if you're in the real charts. Okay, so, that's what I mean. So yeah, you get to you get to practice and you get to see if you're understanding. So when you plug in a trade, it's like you're plugging in a real trade. Now you can throw in, let's just say, ten dollars into the account and do a zero point zero one. And it, which is 10 cent. So you're not losing really like, you know I'm saying you're not really losing a lot. You got $10 that you're playing with to get disciplined with, to get understanding with. So with $10, your mindset is I can't afford to lose one trade. So I'm going to wait until everything aligns up and then I'll take a trade. But if you start with 50 or a hundred, our minds, because it's trading and we know the possibility of how much money we can make, we start risking a little more and we don't, we don't trade with the same mentality. We're like, Oh, it's cool. I'm only down $10. I still got 40 left. And that's not the mentality we want. We don't want to be giving away money. This ain't, we ain't in Vegas. Facts, bro. Talk that shit. Facts. So let me see. Chad, don't stay. Yeah, big, yeah, big facts. Mm -hmm. So don't stay on a, he said, don't stay in a demo too long so you can train your emotions. So this is an emotional game as well. So your emotions will attempt to get the best of you. Let's say you lose a trade, you may want to revenge trade where you just plug in instantly without even looking at anything. Oh, it got to go up. So let me just hit buy. And then you just blow your whole account and now you have to refund or put more money back into your account that you already don't have to, to give. Right. I, I ain't even going to flex on you. I kind of low-key experienced some of that shit like a couple of weeks ago when I was uh, when I was dumping a little bit of money into uh, when I was dumping a little bit of money into some of these stocks that I was doing and shit. I was like, man, I'm like, I, I was like, I was like, I understand the charges low-key like 30% of it, 40% of it. But I'm like, some of it was like kind of like, like what you just said, emotional thing. Like I see a drop and I'm like, okay, if I put this in there, I'm hoping that it go back up type shit. Mm -hmm. That That's that. What's that song back in the day? My mind playing tricks on me. That's what it be. Facts. We're like, yo, uh, it's moving. It's moving. Oh, I'm, ready to, get in. I'm ready to get in. I'm ready to get in. And it's like, oh, snap. It's not even time. So we, we have to adapt the patient mentality. We got to adapt. A trading plan for ourselves like what is it that i want to hit today you know i want to i just want to make 50 dollars today if that's my goal for today once i hit 50 i'm done trading for the day if my monthly goal is 1500 a month well i definitely need to make 50 dollars a day 50 dollars a day you said if your, if your goal is what 1500 a month right 50 dollars a day if you want to make 3000 a month that's a hundred dollars a day Damn. See, that's what I'm, man. That's that's why I'm trying to learn this shit fucking key, bro. That's exactly why I'm trying to be educated on this shit, because I, man, can you imagine what an extra 1,500, three bands to do on top of you having a regular job or something? You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Anything is possible, because we have the ability, we have the skill sets that can't be taken away from us. Nobody can take the skill from you. Nobody. Yeah. So once, 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 everything, once, once you make profit, and once you get everything understood, y'all, you can really take over. You can live life on your own terms. You can travel when you want to. You don't have to look at prices no more. Like I used to hate trying to, oh, you, this is $10. Oh, let me get the cheaper one. Or When prices no longer matter and you can just live life on your own terms and just get what you want, when you want, why you want, how you want. It has you on a different frequency. When I was 
struggling to pay a bill or just to get my daughter that bag of chips, my frequency was way lower. I'm stressed out trying to live in this bubble of how do I get out of this? And when you don't have people around you that's motivating you, inspiring you and telling you how to get out of it because you got people around you that may be saying you can't. This is impossible or whatever those words are that is not in alignment with your end goal. You have to shift the people that you're around. Who are your top five? T-Mobile started the trend of the top five. Your fate or your fave five, right? So who's your, your, your fave five in your circle that can help you become the greater version, the better version of yourself? Rather, it's I'm going to be honest with you, bro. You and my uh, 65 year old mentor guard the two most positive influences right now. But you know what's crazy, though? Because both of y'all got different mind aspects. That's why I like talking to both of y'all. Because he only deals with stocks. Like, he's scared of day trading. He like, man, fuck that. I'm not trying to lose no brain on this day trading. You know what I'm saying? But you, you like the day trading shit because you make money. That's what I'm like. Because he told me, he like, man, don't do the day trading and all this shit. But I'm like, but what if I'm good at it? What if, I, what if I'm, you know, you speaking from your experience. But, like, what if my experience is different from your experience? You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. People will put their fears on you and it will prevent some time you from doing what you want to do. Like, oh, I want to day trade. Oh, you shouldn't do that. Just like when people say don't trade news events. I love trade news events. I know how to read the daggone news event. So why would I miss out on money that's pretty much being given to me? Because I understand how to read it. But just because the individual who said, oh, you, you shouldn't trade it. That don't mean that they're wrong. Just from their experience, they don't understand how to effectively trade the news event to get the results that they want. So they just stay away from it and they stay in their pocket, which isn't wrong because nobody that trades is wrong. Even when you right. say it's going to sell and it buys or you say it's going to buy and it sell, you're still not wrong. You may just be at the wrong time. It may not be going in that yeah. the whole entire time that you want to because right now it's just been going up and down every every second, every minute doing the same exact thing. It's just are you buying at the right time? Are you selling at the right time? Did you close out on your profit at the right time? So this is basically like, like, oh, okay. So like, basically like, did you close within that one minute at the right time? Or did you close in that 15 minutes at the right time? You know what I'm saying? Like that type shit. So like right here, it, we're on a five minute time frame. So if, okay, I'm I'm basing, if I'm basing a trade off the five minute time frame, I have to understand it can take increments of five minutes for the trade to get to its destination. Okay. If I'm on an hour time frame, my mindset has to shift. I have to look at the candles as every candle represents one hour. So it can take hours for my trade to play out. Even if I look uh -huh. at the hour time frame up front, if I come here first and I open my mouth and get on this, like, yo, oh, we're on an hour time frame, y'all. We're about to look for this to go up for a buy. And then I drop down to the lower time frame. We're still basing our trade off the hour. So it can still take hours, but we're entering on a five minute time frame for a, a clutch entry. Right. So basically you're trying to earn your bread before that hour basically no nah, we want to get in from the beginning of the hour so we want to catch the beginning of the move we want to catch the best trade possible so if we're looking at it at a higher time frame for guidance it takes what uh 11, 12 five minute candles to create a one hour candle so we want to get in between one of those 12 okay now, of course, I'm not about to you go. I'm not going back like, OK, one, two, three, six up. Oh, this is the 12. I'm not doing that. I'm looking at those zones that I drew on an hour time frame and then looking at how price is reacting to those zones on the hour time frame. So here we can see uh, okay. from this bottom zone, we're looking for it to buy from here. So if price come back down to here, OK, cool. Come here and respect this area so that way I know you're struggling to break below it and if it's struggling to break below this zone that's indication hey we about to go up so if it gets uh, into the uh, area, uh, and i go to the lower time frame from here now i'm like okay so on this 15 minute time frame we are pulling down to this zone so if i mm. wait and wait until it gives me that entry to the upside i have a higher possible chance of winning even here, just looking at this little movement, I'm on a 15 minute time for not the five. Wait a minute. Oh, I got to click the right thing. Let's say this candle stops right here and starts pulling up from right here. This is exactly what it did. It pulled up. If it stops yep. right where it's at right now, this is exactly the movement that it's doing. 
So I would expect it to come up from here. That's that same pattern we was talking about that happened on a five minute time frame that I look for. So if this, let me move this out the way, starts to create this pattern, I'm like, cool. What I want to see is happening. Now I have more confidence in plugging in a trade to create profit. Right. If no matter what type of trader you are on this call, if you tell yourself, I want this to happen and you plug in before that happens, it's it's a it's a mistake, right? It's the individual's mistake. It's, it's a mistake. I did that. I should have waited until this happened and then plugged in. I got I got greedy. I rushed. I just I was ready for it to get in there. Now I'm in drawdown and and uh, I'm about to blow my account. We don't want to have those emotions. Do you know if my uh if our phone if my phone will let me do like all the stuff you're doing on your laptop, like on that, like like putting in the gray bars and all that shit will let me do it on the app too, the trading app. Mm-hmm. Yep, you can do it. Oh, so I can do it on my phone, like how you highlighting the greens and the grays and all that stuff. Like I can do that on my phone too. Like I don't use a laptop, but can I do that same thing on my phone with the app? Mm-hmm. Yep. Okay, bad, 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 bad. Let me see. Also, it may not always be best practice, but a lot of the things that Keith does by hand, you can find indicators on trading view that does it for you. Yeah, big facts. Mm. Mm. Big facts. And Keith, don't and Keith, don't be disrespecting my space time off T Mobile started to top five. My space started that. <laughs> <laughs> I knew hey, I knew some heat was gonna come from it without yeah. going to Miami. You know what I mean? Now I'm gonna wait till you finish teaching and everything. Well, don't you ever just play my hey, face like that? Again. Hey, look, that's when I got hit. <laughs> I got I got hit T Mobile days. You know what I'm saying? MySpace. <laughs> I sucked at MySpace until you could add the music and stuff on there. You feel me? That's when I started like oh, Man, I'm telling you, man, you, man, I swear that would take some back, man. I remember when it first started with Black Planet. I remember oh, that shit. Snap. Like <laughs> He oh yeah, back, I had Black Planet too, but Black Planet ain't had no top five. <laughs> I'll tell you, <laughs> y'all tell uh, what they say back in the day. Y'all telling my age now. <laughs> I'm telling you, bro. I'm telling you, bro. <laughs> hey, no, y'all something else. So look, it's pulling up from here. Look, you know what I'm saying it hit the it hit the uh this imbalance right here, which is which is cool. It hit the imbalance, and now it's reacting to the imbalance. Right here, we have the bottom piece of bread. So once I get that cross and floss from the green and red in Trion. I was watching something. Maybe I should watch some more videos on that. But it was a video I was watching that was talking about how to read, like, like what you were just talking about, like the crosses, like how the lines crosses where you should know if those lines crosses where you should buy or whether you should sell, depending on how that those lines cross. Oh, uh, yeah, so you can do... Down at your TDI. Yeah, what people will be having on their chart, they'll do something like this. So they'll go to the indicators. That buy look lovely. I hope y'all see in it. So they'll do an EMA, a moving average. I'll just click it twice to add two. And something as simple as this. This is a, a simple little cross strategy you guys can eat off of. So first EMA, you put it at five. Hit um, just go to style. Let me change the color. I'll change the green. Make it thick. You know what I'm saying? Boom. Go to the second one. Put this on 13. And I'm gonna make it red. <laughs> make it thick. You know what I'm saying? So you can see it. And then 13 it out. Real simple. All right, so here we just want to spike and across. So we want a sharp V that looks like this. I'm gonna move this over. Some. Okay. So this little sharp V that I'm using as an example, rather it's to the downside or the upside, you want your green moving average to create this sharp V shape. Okay. Yeah. And once it does that, make sure it crosses below or above the red line. So let's go to the 30 minute time frame. So right now is a perfect example. Now I know if this candle just shoots straight up, it's going to force this to cross and be a sharp V. I can see 
that with this five and 13, it looks as if it's about to create a W in real time. So if I know that my entry is at the cross of this green and red candle, cool. That's me being patient with me looking at it the way it's looked at now. If I was to enter right now, I'm putting a stop loss right below this little zone because it's, it's, it's messing around with this zone. It's struggling. Mm -hmm. And I know inside my TDI, I'm almost right. at entry. I'm about to cross the red line for entry. So everything is aligning up. This right. is a 30 minute time frame. So I know it's going to be increments of 30 minutes before this trade play out. But what happens is now let me go back in time to show you how it, it'll be. Let me find one right here. So this little move right here, it got a sharp V on the, on the green, which is that five moving average. All and right. here's the cross. Once it crossed, that's your entry. So once that cross happens, listen, y'all, watch this. When it crosses on a 30-minute time frame, right after that, it only takes two 30-minute candles to create one one-hour candle. So if I have the line here for the cross, when I go to the hour, I can also enter again on the same cross. Mm. Hold up, hold up, wait. I, I lost the spot. Let me go back to 30 minutes. Childish. Okay, here we go. <laughs> no, let me... Just put it here so I know which candle it is. So go to the hour. Bring this. Scroll it in real quick. There we go. So here, on the hour time frame, I can do the same exact thing. Wait for the spike and cross on the hour. So now my entry may be a little different. As you see, the 30-minute entry was at the very bottom of the move. Our one hour right. entry is right here. Mm. And notice our one hour entry got retested and then it took off. Uh, uh. This right here is an imbalance. So price came back to the imbalance and then took off. So not only can you look at it on a 30 minute and the one hour, your final entry can be on the four hour time frame. So now when I find that spike and cross on the four hour time frame, this is my four hour entry. The spikes here on this red candle, the cross is here. So now I got three entries on the same trade that I can just let ride. These are the three entries all the way up to that zone. This is the break of structure here. Where my cursor's at, price came back, retested structure, and pilt to the top. Mm. Hey, nice, Leon. Hey, now. So that's how... Yeah, I've seen that. That's how we can look at the trade. That's how... Uh, that's a way that you can actually trade any... Pay, like Even if I look at it on SPX right now real quick before we get off of here. SPX 500... Now, I don't have a spike on this four-hour time frame, but we simply have a cross to the downside, which is cool. Now, if you have to question it, don't take it. Just, mm -hmm. just, keep, just If it looks clean, nah, I mean, you know what I'm saying? So right here, yeah. here's spike, here's our cross. Y'all heard Kayla early in the call, I've been in the trade already. And let's just say this is the entry. Way in profit. Going to the 30 minute time. Hmm. That spike and cross happened just a few moments before. Inside the imbalance. Here's the celery. No range. Clean entry. The 5 and 13 EMA. Align, align the 5 and 13 which are supply and demand zones. And make it make sense so you can make dollars. That's all we got. Now do. that okay. Now I'm just gonna be some days about you and correct me, please, if I'm wrong. 
So your green area down there is your buy, but you're saying in that imbalance, if you put your entry in where that imbalance is, you're still going to be making money because you're still above that green buying platform. Correct. Correct. Mm -hmm. Okay. 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 Because you didn't sit up there and, and put your, your buying power, like once it crosses all over green, you did it in the imbalance area. Nah, so remember, we're, we're using the 5 and 13 moving average. We're looking for that spike and cross. Once we see the spike, so let me grab my... Uh, right. So this right here, the spike, and then the cross. Once you see the spike happen, yeah. as soon as that green line crossed that red line, you enter in a trade for a sale because it's crossing to the downside. So you just follow the uh. trade showing you. And once you sell it, now I'm going to go for 10 pips. That's just me. We have people that trade different styles. Some people will hold the trade. I know Leon's a swing trader. Oh, okay, Keith. So just hit real quick. Okay, okay. So if that green line crosses over that red line, then you're going downward. But if that green line crosses that red line where it's going upward, then you're going towards like the bullish. That's where you you start getting that bread. That's where you will buy. So right here, you got a little a little spike. Here's your cross to the upside. So we can buy here and take it up top. Right. Yep. You're right. Mm -hmm. And then if your green crosses over in that red going downward, then that's when you need to motherfucking sell because that shit about to start going downhill. But now he got it for sure. That's where the confidence just came at. Yep, you guys. <laughs> hey, I'm, I'm going to get this shit, Russell. I'm on this. <laughs> hey, he was confident. Hey, he was confident. <laughs> he was, hey, that's when you know hey, somebody got I'm, it. I'm going to get this shit on mama, bro. <laughs> <laughs> it's like playing 2K on the Xbox, nigga. I'm going to get my player up. <laughs> Oh, mama, bro. Oh, my God. Hey, you know what? That's the perfect time, y'all. I'm going I'm to I'm 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 go get something to eat uh, tonight, 7 o'clock. Let's get back on to trade AUD, a news event. I'm not going to So, so we back on at 7 o'clock tonight? <laughs> yeah, 7 Eastern. Okay. Bet, bet, bet. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm going to do some learning. And throughout the day, I'm going to do, like, the little demos and little shit so I can practice this shit and start getting this shit right. But I, I'm, I'm seeing where you're going with it, bro. So bear with me if I'm hitting you with, like, a million questions. Oh, it's all gravy. That's that's your way of learning. That's how you get your clarity. So it's all gravy with mashed potatoes. And that's right. <laughs> all right, y'all. I'm gonna oh, see you. Everything. everything. Shit, man. I'm I'm trying to tell y'all one of these one of these years, bro. We all gonna be motherfucking millionaires. I can't fucking wait. Facts.